Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. Welcome, family. Greetings. I want to welcome everyone who is watching us on this uh, show. And uh, we continue to pray for our nation. We continue to stand as intercessors, declaring the word of God over the nation because God is in it. And uh, really, the disturbances that we are seeing in the country is because God is on the move and ZANU-PF is just panicking. ZANU-PF does not know what to do. ZANU-PF is just doing things that you can wonder to ask yourself to say, what is this? What is really happening? Why are things happening like this? A lot of people are wondering. A lot of people are asking questions. A lot of uh, senior citizens are asking questions on what is happening in the nation. Left, right, and center, it's just confusing. But uh, I can tell you, when God stands in the camp of the enemy, when God puts his hand in the stands of, in the in the camp of the enemy, you will start to experience things like this. These are the last kicks of a dying horse. This is why we are seeing this happening. So do not be surprised when you see Zanupiev behaving the way they are behaving. Definitely things are not well. And they are continuously doing things and erring from every point. They are making error after error, error after error. When you look at Harare, Harare right now is full of potholes all over. But ZANU-PF is beginning to talk about constructing roads and instead they are going to destroy roads that are still lookable. Roads that are still looking very good are the ones that they have started destroying in the name of wanting to rehabilitate such roads. And uh, Dr. Ibu Mandaza has come out to condemn such kind of acts, asking questions as to what is the reason really behind digging up very good roads in Harare in the name of uh, rehabilitating them. Why not go for the roads that are potholed, roads, roads that are worse, where cars are almost, you know, almost half of the whole vehicle can fall into a ditch, but not, not that, not, not such areas. ZANPF is not going there. They are going to roads that are lookable, and they are doing this and in the name of the SADC meeting that is coming, the SADC delegation, I don't know, but the citizens generally, they are asking questions. Citizens are worried about this that is happening. So uh, I, I'm sure many of you have seen the video, already the video of uh, the destruction of the roads in Harare, and uh, ZANPF says they want to be reconstructing such roads. At times, the things that are happening, they are not really necessary. I don't know who really would do it, like what, what, what ZANPF is doing. I need sound on this one, but let me just play something like this. This is what ZANPF are ululating about. Varakashi, they are so happy. <laughs> You very much for what you are doing for this i see no reason why a road that is still looking like this should really be destroyed in the name of wanting to construct yet another another road. just look at this just look at this so when we say zanu pf has got the power to destroy but uh, they don't have power to build that is exactly what we'll be talking about this is really very very unnecessary some touch-ups need, only needed to be done on these roads. I am telling you, these are touch-ups really that were needed, not what we are seeing here. This is just beyond uh, you know, imagination. So we we are seeing quite quite many people condemning this very act that we are seeing ZANU-PF having done. There are many citizens like Dr. Ibo Mandaza also came around asking questions and saying, what is the rationale behind destroying such roads? Let us just go to 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 his um to his tweet and we see what he has said about this it is really not the right thing to do it's really uh, unfortunate that uh, we have a leadership who just do things they do things without thinking they do things without consulting anyone and at times it's 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 really wrong so dr ibu mandaza here is just asking hard to understand the rationale uh, of digging up Julius Nyerere and Simon and Samora Marshall Avenues, including Leopold Takawira and several other others in the CBD of Harare. What a damn waste of resources on 
uh, on infrastructure far less in need of rehabilitation than many other roads, including uh, including the main highways of the country. And look at the traffic anarchy around Harare with the motorists taken completely by surprise by a state impervious and disdainful of public opinion, right? So this is what the other uh, you know, senior citizens are uh, condemning Mnangagwa. Why are you digging up these roads? For what reason? And especially without consultation with the masses, you see. So a lot of people have been responding to this also. We see Mdini saying, does anything make sense with the with these uh, cool dunderheads? It said that we we are ruled by a clueless bunch of gangsters begged to the hilt by men in uniform. Kagame in Rwanda, a dictator of sorts, but Rwanda has the best performing economy in Africa today. Godfrey is saying, you know nothing about roads, Damien. This one must be a ZANPF. Just imagine, just imagine. This person is a ZANPF person, and they just want to support for the sake of supporting. This is where things are getting wrong in our nation. Because even when the new blue movement comes in, we are not going to be just ululating and clapping hands for everything that they do. We are going to be standing to condemn some things that will be done that are wrong. Things that will not be done in the right way will be still there to still correct and say, no, guys, that is wrong. That is the right thing to do. But now, when it comes to ZANU-PF, they just, you know, hero worship, they boot leak, and they praise anything that Mnangagwa does, no matter how much he messes about. They just continue to, you know, to, to, to shout and say everything has been done. Or in, in, in this fact, can you know him? This is ZANU-PF Murakash. He says, Chakanaka, why complain? Chakanaka Che, you can't be destroying a road that looks that is still lookable when we want to see whether they are going to be doing this for all roads. Definitely, they're not going to do that for all roads. So why not leave the better roads and do the worst so that at least you are making a step ahead? So Trevor Ngwe also responded, say they do not consider us as citizens whose opinions matter. As far as they are concerned, we are less than subjects. Exactly. This is what is happening, and we agree with that definitely. It is, it is, uh, it, it's so painful that we have a leadership that is so disconnected from the people. Someone is saying the reason is not the Chirundu Arara project, but this, the such a conference hosting in August. In the meantime, chaos will reign in the CBD for daily dwellers as no one cares about convenience anymore. And someone is saying they want to loot. That, that is one other reason. It's about looting right there right there there's looting somebody's going to be eating from there you see so somebody says Ibo, it's uh it's professor omera it's the lack of skills and competence associated with emerson nangago zono tankira kumsoro ikoko vanu vake vaichira makandiwa ne ne makomba engoda what to fix cbd roads amen they need a proper project manager exactly this is what is happening Tatenda is saying, I didn't understand the rationale too. These roads just needed a bit of resurfacing at best. The mayhem is it, it, the mayhem it has caused with traffic as well. Then uh, top of uh, top of it off with ministers doing visits and disrupting the work the workflow. Nothing makes sense in this country. Uh, and somebody is being sarcastic. He's saying it's Shamisa's fault, I guess. <laughs> And uh, Small says, a parent who only cleans the house when visitors are expected. Just imagine, when without visitors, the, that can't... We have been talking about the Harare roads. And we're saying, surely, why would ZANPF be banging their heads on the roof of their of their cars as they are driving? As long as they are saying the, 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 the Harare City Council is the one that is running and it's an opposition party, so we will never put a cent there. Would rather sabotage no matter how much even if roads all roads tend to dust road we just want to prove a point we don't do that that is why our country is not going anywhere so isaac says it's no waste of uh, resources you need to understand the road uh, this is someone else you know people that just want to justify some things that cannot be justified there's there's really no reason definitely whatsoever for doing this no no reason so it's said that we have a leadership who are just bent on destruction. And when it comes to destroying their graders already, they have enough diesel. Like I was saying in the last time when we were talking about the destruction of houses, that ZANPF is all the power to destroy, but no power to build.
right now those those roads that they are destroying even if they were to resurface them but you will find that they are not going to go to any other roads again somewhere else they will just concentrate they probably that's where they know that the convoys of those delegates are going to be running there and Nagawa is hoping that when they run on smooth tarred roads and the like they are going to endorse him and give him the chairmanship of the Sadiq. but yet that's a pipe dream it's not going to happen it's not going to happen because when you look at the way that even Sadiq itself they go through the process of uh, of rotation on that position this portion for zimbabwe is already passed when uh, 2017 after the coup that's when they were supposed to come in after the coup it was supposed to be 29 i think 2019 i think but because they came in as a coup government they could not be given that chairmanship and the rotation uh, it passed zimbabwe and it went on to the next country you see so the same thing nangagwa is still in in the in the west predicament this time around because he still has the stolen election he still have the siom report and he still has this Shabang issue of recalling of, of uh, MPs. All those issues are issues that are standing with Sadi. You see, so for him to think again, it is going to be just easy for him to take over. And yet also not considering the fact that the cycle has already skipped Zimbabwe. So it will have to go again through until it comes back again. And I, uh, I, I think it's supposed, supposed to be a year, a year's term, a year's term, which means if all countries have to be rotating and then coming back to Zimbabwe, when is that going to be? Mnangagwa won't be there anymore. <laughs> Even if he says 2030, I think uh, he's not going to be there. The man is 87 this year. He's supposed to be turning 87. And uh, uh, three more years, I think, uh, already he'll be 90. And I, I'm telling you, it's going to be bad. He said it himself. He confirmed his age when he said uh, the late Namibian president was his young brother. Yet he says he's 81 and the Namibian president was 82. So he knows because he was now telling the truth. He was speaking from the heart, not from the paper or from the script that he was reading. Then he spoke from his mind, knowing his age. He, he knew that uh, the Namibian president was his young brother. So I don't think this man is going to go far. You see, like I was saying even the last time that Mnangagwa, uh, he, he, he drinks. Mnangagwa has been doing humanizing. He has been doing a lot of things, dirty things. And... He cannot outlive Robert Mugabe. It's not possible. Mugabe did not drink. Mugabe did not humanize. Mugabe was keeping himself healthy. Mugabe would go into gym every morning. Mugabe would go into gym until his end. So that man was uh, much, much healthy because of his lifestyle. Unlike the lifestyle of Mnangagwa, who is busy on whiskey and the what, like, those things, they cook up the liver, they cook up the internal organs. And you cannot live longer. You can't go far especially alcohol and the abuse of women. So you won't get there. You can have the wish to get there. As always, everybody wishes to be alive more and more, but that is not going to just happen just like that. So it is a sad development, really, that we are seeing that money is being put to, you know, useless uh, purposes. You don't destroy roads that are lookable. You'd rather uplift them, you know, resurface slightly and close up and just reshape them and then you can go to roads that are totally potholed. Those are the roads that you can totally take out. And then you come up with what? With a new, a totally new surface. And this was supposed to be a project that is supposed to be done for almost all roads leading in and out of Harare. Then they'll know that they are done. Then if they can now start to go to the others, to the suburbs, to the residential suburbs, and then they go on maybe towards the, 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 the high density suburbs, something like that. And then the whole of Harare is uplifted facially in terms of uh, the surfaces of the roads. And then that will be fine. Then next time, they will take up again another project. So the money that these guys are stealing is too much. They have that money is there if they really want to just put the money to good use. I'm telling you, 200 million of gold that is being stolen in Zimbabwe per month can just be to given to, to Harare for just one month and say, we are giving you 200 million just for the roads. It can do a, a great work. It can change the surfaces of Harare in an amazing, amazing way. And they can just skip one month of stealing. You know, 200 million is quite a lot of money. Why would you want all that money for anyway? You just have one stomach, you have one, one mouth, and you have you sleep in one bed. You can just eat one plate full of, of whatever food that you are eating. You just have one stomach. You, you, can't, you can't finish that money. You know, this spirit of mammon that drives ZANPF is just too much. And this is why they are failing to do what they are supposed to do. So, citizens, all we are saying is we want freedom. 
from these people. The nation must come back. We must command, continue to demand our freedom from the nation, from these people. Our nation must be free, and God, God is bringing our nation in this season, and it is going to happen. There is no other way. And we, as intercessors, also are on our knees, continuously praying for the nation. The nation needs prayer, and the season of the restoration of Zimbabwe is now. It's only needs people that are standing up, declaring the word of God. Zimbabwe is coming. Zimbabwe is going to be for us and well led and well developed Zimbabwe. It's a dream, it's a dream come true in a very short period of time that we are entering into. So let's continue standing in, in prayer. We are in prayer in intercession. We are in prayer and intercession let us continue to pray we are standing in faith knowing that the lord will deliver the nation into our hands so as of now to discover our channel so that we can continue to have uh you know uh, these discussions together as a family otherwise god bless